Sarah Carter digs deep into Mueller's past and what she found could change everything by Aaron Moreno for truthfeednews.com. Investigative uh, journalist and Fox News contributor Sarah Carter just put out another explosive report, this time covering Robert Mueller's controversial past as a Boston-based DOJ prosecutor. Serious questions are now being raised over Mueller's role in concealing the FBI's dealing with mobster and informant uh, James Whitey Bulger. From Sarah Carter, President Donald Trump directed angry tweets at special counsel Robert Mueller over the weekend. The tweets were uh, prompted by the Department of Justice's decision to fire Deputy Director Andrew McCabe Friday, as recommended by the Bureau's Office of Professional Responsibility, took action on McCabe after the DOJ's Inspector General handed over evidence that the former FBI agent lied under oath and leaked information to the media. Why does Mueller's team have 13 hardened Democrats, some big crooked Hillary supporters, and zero Republicans? Another Dem recently added, does anyone think this is fair? And yet there is no collusion. Trump's tweet on Mueller appeared to some Republicans and Democrats uh, being a veiled threat to fire Mueller, those lawmakers warned the president that it would be the beginning of the end of his presidency if he fired the special counsel. They also criticized Trump's attorney, John Dowd, for suggesting over the weekend that the Mueller probe should end. Ty Cobb, the president's personal attorney, reassured lawmakers on Monday that the president does not plan to fire Mueller. But doubt is not alone. McCabe's firing should raise serious questions as to where Mueller's investigation is going. Mueller's past involvement in cases cast a very different light on the former FBI director than the one painted by his proponents and the media, said David Schoen. A civil rights and defense attorney, Schoen, uh, has been outspoken on the special counsel and criticized Mueller's top attorney, Andrew Weissman's, involvement in the investigation as reported. We all have the right, even the obligation, to demand fairness in the process, and this process is not the least fair and the investigation and the investigations lack integrity, said Schoen. He noted that as a defense attorney, Dowd should question how the investigation against Trump and his campaign came to be as and if it was based on false information in an unverified dossier paid for by political opponents. Then the investigation is moot said Schoen. The Trump-Russia investigation appears to be based on unverified and circumstantial evidence coordinated actions of political opponents and a group of partisan bureau officials who were bent on bringing charges against Trump, said Schoen. Although some lawmakers have asked for a special, second, uh, special counsel to investigate the FBI and DOJ's actions in investigating Trump, many still continue to support Mueller's ongoing investigation, which began at the behest of those being accused of wrongdoing in the FBI. Schoen is a surprise that lawmakers have lauded Mueller as a stellar and well-respected former FBI director, but have little knowledge about the former Bureau's director's past from the criticism uh, during his years in Boston, challenges with uh, the 9-11 Commission findings when he was first appointed to the FBI and handling of the anthrax case to name a few, he said. Mueller in Boston in the early 1980s, before Mueller became the second longest serving FBI director, he was a criminal prosecutor in the Boston office of the Justice Department and then became the acting U.S. attorney in Boston from 1986 through 1987. 
It was Mueller's actions during that time that raised questions about his role in one of the FBI's most controversial cases involving the FBI's use of a confidential informant that led to the conviction of four innocent men who were sentenced to death for murders they did not commit. Local law enforcement officials, the media, and some colleagues criticized Mueller and the FBI for what they believed was the Bureau's role in covering up for the FBI's longtime dealings with mobster and informant James Whitey, quote, Bulger. Bulger was a kingpin and a confidential informant for the FBI from the 70s and the Bureau's efforts to take down the Italian Mafia in Boston. But Bulger's relationship with his FBI handler, Special Agent John Connolly, became toxic. It was later discovered that Connolly went out of his way to protect Bulger and aid the crime boss against investigations being conducted by the Boston PD and the Massachusetts State Police. According to reports at the time, Connolly would inform Bulger of wiretaps and surveillance being conducted by law enforcement. Journalist Kevin Cullen wrote extensively about FBI's involvement with Bulger and raised concerns about the old case in a 2011 article in uh, Boston.com after Obama asked Congress to make an exception to allow Mueller to stay on two extra years beyond the mandate 10-year limit as FBI director. Cullen said in his story that Mueller, who was first an assistant U.S. attorney, then as the acting U.S. attorney in Boston, had written letters to the parole and pardons board throughout the 1980s opposing clemency for the four men framed by FBI lies. Of course, Mueller was also in that position while Whitey Bulger was helping the FBI cart off his criminal competitors even as he buried bodies in shallow graves along the Neoponse. That's interesting. In 2001, those four men who were convicted in 1965 of Teddy Deegan's murder uh, were exonerated by the courts. It was discovered that the FBI withheld evidence from the court to protect their informant that would have cleared the men, according to reports. At the time, the Bureau buried the truth to protect Vincent Jimmy Flemmy, their informant, who was the brother of Stevie Flemmy, a partner of Bulger. Colleen Rowley, a former FBI special agent and former Minneapolis Division legal counsel of the FBI, wrote an op-ed in the Huffington Post last year. No, Robert Mueller and James Comey aren't heroes stated that when the truth about Bulger was finally uncovered through intrepid investigative reporting and persistent honest judges, U.S. taxpayers footed a $100 million court award to the four men framed for murders committed by the FBI-operated Bulger gang. But according to Cullen, Mueller never was asked by Congress, what did you know about Whitey Bulger and when did you know it? U.S. District Judge Nancy Gertner uh, in Boston said the Bureau helped convict the four men of a crime they did not commit and the three men of them had been sentenced to die in the electric chair. This case goes beyond mistakes, beyond the unavoidable errors or of a fallible system, Gertner wrote in a 228-page decision, which called the FBI's defense that Massachusetts was to blame for an inadequate investigation absurd, according to Cullen's article. Schoen noted, for these reasons alone, there should be concern about Mueller's special counsel. As I have mentioned before, under Mueller's watch in Boston, the second most corrupt relationship between an FBI agent, John Connolly, now in prison for murder-related charges and his information, Whitey Bulger, unfolded, said Schoen. 
Mueller was neck deep in it and has never answered the questions that the media asked rhetorically, but that should have been asked by a grand jury of congressional committee. Even such dubious sources as the New York Times, Boston Globe, and Huffington Post have demanded answers many have suggested he should never have been FBI director. Over the weekend, Representative Trey Gowdy, chairman of the House Oversight Committee, was one of those members. If you have an innocent client, Mr. Client, Mr. Dowd, act like it, Gowdy told Fox News Sunday, who added Mueller's probe should continue. Like Gowdy, Senator Lindsey Graham uh, also stressed that there should be a second special counsel telling this reporter the system is working we shouldn't let it work we should let it work excuse me firing Mueller would be a grave mistake uh-huh but Schoen disagrees with Gowdy and Graham saying it is a central tenant of the criminal justice system that one may always challenge the integrity of the investigation, prosecution, and it's reckless, and it is reckless for a member of Congress to suggest otherwise at Schoen. Schoen and the former FBI official disagree with Graham. The former FBI official who worked on counterintelligence cases said if the foundation of the investigation isn't based on credible, solid evidence, then Mueller's investigation is one in search of a crime, and that is not what you want, and that's not how it should be done. You see? Absolutely. And you see how Gowdy and Graham want Mueller's investigation to continue. I mean, that's why Gowdy is talking out of the two sides of his mouth, you see? Don't, I don't trust Gowdy as far as I can throw him. Uh, and you see, they're looking for a crime, and that's not how you do it. No, there has to be credible, solid evidence in order to proceed with this kind of an investigation. Mueller is just trying to look for anything and everything just to get a conviction like he did previously back in the days. And Mueller never answered for this. And why would Obama asked to have him another two years on the team when he's supposed to retire in the 10 years? Uh, that's a red flag right there. Do you see what I'm saying? There are things that we don't know about, but the corruption that I see here runs real deep, real deep. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And again, thank you so much for watching.